Did you know you can get early access to my videos for $1 per creation on Patreon and for 99 pence on YouTube membership? The Cold War saw ever more crazy nuclear weapons tests. One such of these tests was known as the Starfish Prime and would create a scary but beautiful light display over the Pacific Ocean. In the late 1950s and early 1960s, knowledge of radiation in space was relatively incomplete, with a Van Allen Belt discovery in 1958. The discovery was that bands of high energy particles were held in place by strong magnetic fields. In 1958, the US exploded six weapons in high altitude tests, but the results raised more questions than it answered. These tests would stop when the USA, USSR, and Great Britain agreed to a three year memorandum on nuclear weapons tests. Internal political pressures within the USSR led to an announcement in August 1961 that they would be lifting the memorandum on their testing. In response, the US conducted Operation Dominic, a series of 31 weapons tests. During this period, a much more ambitious series of tests were conducted in order to try and answer some of the high altitude questions from 1958. The series of tests were called Operation Fishbowl, and the objectives were to investigate three main phenomena the electromagnetic pulses and its effects, auroras associated with high altitude nuclear explosions and blackouts of radio communication. The fishbowl launches would be from Johnston Atoll. The test required a launch vehicle to place the warheads at the correct altitude. For this, the PGM-17A-4 rocket was selected. The warhead that was selected for the top of the missile was the W-49. It was 20 inches in diameter and 54 to 58 inches long, depending on the model weighing between 1,640 and 1,680 pounds, and had a design yield of around 1.44 megatons. The warhead was introduced in 1958 and saw service on the four Atlas, Jupiter and Titan I ballistic missile systems. The first two launches during Operation Fishbowl didn't go to plan. Launch number one was called Blue Gill and took place on the 2nd of June 1962. During the launch, the missile lost radar contact with the ground, Fearing the missile being off trajectory and on a collision course for any shipping or local air traffic, the mission was aborted and the rocket was destroyed. The next launch, named Starfish on the 20th of June, went to plan for around 59 seconds after liftoff, only for the engine to cut out and the rocket then started to break apart. Again, the order to abort and destroy the rocket was issued. The rocket was at an altitude between 30 and 35,000 feet, the destruction of the rocket spread radioactive material over Johnston Island and a large amount of debris made it into the ocean just off the coast. This leads us on to what you have come here for, Starfish Prime. Now, if a mission failed and was re-attempted, then the name would be followed by Prime, hence Starfish Prime being a rego of the previous launch. The rerun was set for the 9th of July 1962, the missile successfully launched and the warhead re-entry vehicle successfully reached the altitude of 250 miles. The warhead exploded at 0900 hours UTC, 13 minutes and 41 seconds after liftoff, achieving a yield close to the warhead's design spec at 1.4 megatons. The explosion was the largest the US had ever conducted at high altitude. The base particles produced lit up the sky while energetic electrons created artificial radiation belts around the Earth. The blast sent an electromagnetic pulse far larger than anticipated, sending recording apparatus off the scale. Because of this, the operations found it difficult to find an accurate reading. 898 miles away in Honolulu, Hawaii, over 300 streetlights went out and various other electrical items received interference from the pulse. The EMP and resultant radiation belt damaged or knocked out several satellites in Earth's orbit. These included Transit 4, Telstar 1 and the British Aerial 1. The satellite, although receiving damage affecting its operation, resulted in an odd change of events. The damage to its internal clock inadvertently extended its mission from one year to the mid-1970s. Many of the damaged satellites provided valuable data on the effect of nuclear weapons at high orbit. The explosion was 10 degrees above the horizon viewed from Hawaii at 11pm local time, creating a sunset effect. The fireball burned a bright orangey red. For a few minutes following the detonation, auroras could be viewed around the site of the explosion. Several smaller rockets were launched to take measurements of the explosion and its after effects. A cadmium tracer was included in the launch to allow scientists to understand the rate at which polar and tropical air masses mix during different seasons. As much as five years later, electrons from the explosion could still be measured. The fishbowl test concluded with tightrope launch on the 2nd of November 1962. 
The information gathered from the test showed that a high altitude explosion could knock out many sensitive electronics, essentially paralysing a country. In the 1960s, the devastation reaped would have been bad enough. In the 60 years since, electronic devices have become far more sensitive and are relied upon for many more essential services. This means that if a nation was to set off a nuclear explosion of a certain yield over a country, it could literally send it back to the Dark Ages. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video. This one has been a bit shorter than the normal type of video I've been doing, but I thought it was well worth covering. Thank you so much to my Patreons and YouTube members for your financial support. If you'd like to vote and get early access to videos, you can on my Patreon for $1 per creation. I've got a Twitter, and if you'd like to follow me there, that would be great. And all that's left to say is thank you for watching.